This is my channel right here. Almost. Well, for someone that uh, speaks to directly to Jesus the Christ, I don't get very many views. They're pretty low. I think I'm. Sometimes I go through there and wonder how some other people get such high reviews on everything. And I hardly get any when I'm actually someone that speaks to the Christ. And Christ speaks to me. I almost didn't make it back on here on YouTube. Because uh, YouTube always messing around with things. Um, and when I went to log back in, um, I couldn't get back in found out later I was using the wrong screen name it was my old screen name that uh, wasn't going through because it was already on the, the automatic thing where it automatically comes up when you but what I want to talk about is the big wheels of God these people making themselves big wheels of God um, I really don't want to go into names right now. And I can tell you some of the things that they've said. As one of them saying, uh, if somebody believes, as the Apostle Paul said, if someone says, uh, if someone believes there's something when they're nothing or something like that, I can't remember all the Bible verses as it says exactly. Uh, but anyway, they're saying that we're dead, which is not true. We're a living corruption. Now that is true. We are, what you see is is real, but it's all corruption. Um, like um, Mary Madeline. Uh, Jesus, when he was came back, he told told her not to touch him because I have not yet came to the Father, ascended to the Father yet. And we figured that that she was alive, that we are alive, but he told her not to touch her because because we are living corruption, and it might have contaminated him. Or something like that, you know. So we are alive, but we're living corruption, and and no sin can enter the kingdom of heaven. See, there's three types of sin. There's all sin is death. All sin is imperfection. No imperfection will enter into the kingdom of heaven. But there are three types of sin. There is sin of the flesh or small sins of the flesh or big sins of the flesh and then there's spiritual sins which is the sin unto death but the sin of the flesh is not the sin unto death even though you have to be washed the sin of the spirit I believe is rejection of Christ you know so you got these people running around claiming the big shots of God they talk to God and all that and saying that you got to make yourself perfect well, Jesus the Christ told me himself that he has the power to cast out sin. So why are they saying this? They're saying you've got to make yourself perfect. What he does need is us to believe in his holy righteousness. Not our righteousness. See, that's where you come into, if anybody thinks himself to be something, if somebody thinks himself to be righteous, then there are nothing if they think they're righteous. We're to believe in Christ who is something, who is totally righteous. And see, that's the problem what I have with these fluoride head king lovers, what I call them, is they serve the Babylon. They won't repent of their sin. They won't confess that this Babylon Illuminati system is corrupt. 
They don't believe that September 11, 2001 was an inside job. They just don't, they just won't respond to the truth when you tell them. And they confess themselves to be righteous, and we're only righteous through Christ who makes us righteous. But anyway, they're saying things that, uh, back in, uh, around 92, 93, 95, I started to learn a lot from the man that called himself an apostle. But he went and bid this false Illuminati government system Godspeed, and, and God quit giving him truth, and he went off into, became a religious nut, so to speak. And some of the stuff that I was already taught in the spirit by Jesus, uh, he started contradicting. And that's what they're doing now, is contradicting some of these, this claiming to be big wheels. They're saying that the Bible is the false prophet and the Antichrist. See, I always thought, I'm not sure because it has not, revelation has not been totally revealed to me in the spirit of what it all is. But um, they're teaching what I thought was different. Um, I kind of believe the 144,000 that they're talking about was them that uh, uh, Nero murdered and back that time. And I always thought that perhaps the, the dragon was the Roman Empire and the beast was Herod, because the first Herod died, and then another came along, other Herods that replaced him, so that would be the beast, but... But Jesus the Christ told me himself that the Bible is his prophet. Now, why am I going to go believe somebody that tells me that it's the beast? If it's interpreted wrong, yeah, it's no longer the word of God if it's interpreted wrong. But uh, as it says in 1 Corinthians 12, 28, we're supposed to have apostles, prophets, teachers, and so on. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 28 tells how God sets up his church. And God's not going to do very many miracles outside of the church because he can't have people running around with a false gospel and doing miracles because that then that promotes the false gospel. So no, he can't. If you're not if you're not really seeking God's truth, then no, he can't do miracles for you. But he's trying to. But another one's trying to say that Satan has authority on this earth. Well, Satan, the devil, has no authority whatsoever on this earth. When Jesus Christ was um, executed, he lost, the, Satan, the devil, lost all the authority because an innocent man was put, to, was put to death by a government that was influenced by Satan. So Satan no longer has any authority on this earth whatsoever. None. So if I'm trying to tell you that Satan has authority, no, he don't. Now, there are consequences for not obeying God. Yes, there's consequences for that. But Satan, the devil, by legal contract, is actually supposed to be our caretaker. Of course, he ain't going to do it. And we should tell Satan what he should do, because that makes him more guilty for not doing because he agreed to the contract of what would happen if the Christ was crucified without ever sinning so Satan no more has authority on this earth he's allowed freedom just the same as you and I see that's the one thing God honors the most of anything is freedom of choice he doesn't respect anyone he doesn't respect what we're going to necessarily respect what we're going to do because we're righteousness is filthy rags but he does respect the freedom of choice that he has given us 
And see, that's how Satan the devil is actually put away, because we testify the righteousness of the Christ, and he doesn't. So Satan is defeated by that. So I hope I said enough here to get some of you in the right direction. You know, it amazes me, though, that I get so many views, somebody that, but, hey, maybe that's the way it's meant to be, I don't know. But yet, somebody that I know would be a false prophet to try to get more views than I do. But no, Satan doesn't have no authority on this earth. And yes, we are alive. We're corrupted. Living corrupt. No sin's going to... So Christ has to cast our sins out. But uh, what they're telling is just ain't the truth. And I would never say that the the little children in Connecticut got what they deserved and all that. I'm not going to say that. I mean, it's a shame what's going on in the Gulf of Mexico. That's a terrible thing, and I do call it a war. That's a, an attack against the people. That a government that doesn't listen to one where you have, where a government set up like the ancient Roman Empire, you have emperors, now called presidents, kings now called governors, one people, person rulers. The people are not allowed to vote on all the major issues. And then the government comes and does anything they want to us. So no, I don't call that freedom. And yeah, um, as far as I'm concerned, all you need to do is call them a fluoride head Christian. And that pretty much goes down, tell them what they are, that they somebody's not really seeking truth. And probably America does need to change its name to let it, everyone know that um, there's people that claim to be Christians who were murderers. You know, as it says in the last part of Mark, it doesn't say them that call themselves Christians can do certain miracles. It says them that believe can do these miracles, can do these miraculous things those who believe not them that call himself a christian a baptized christian but them who actually believe in the righteousness and have fully repented meaning have truly reject everything of this world you don't call nothing of this world righteous because none of it is righteousness you only believe god Yahweh alone is righteous. That's the only thing that's righteous. That's what true repentance would be, is confessing Jesus Christ in the Son of the living God, Yahweh. Only they are righteous. Nothing else. And they can have the power to transform us into righteous. But like I said, there are consequences for disobedience. But, but you have to read what the Apostle Paul said about the believers.